Joining us now, former Fed Governor Randall uh, Krosner. He was governor from 20, 2006 to 2009 during the financial crisis, now Deputy Dean of Professor of Economics at Chicago Booth. So, Professor Rosner, great to have you on such a momentous day. Finally, we have another winner, three winners for the economic prize. It's really exciting. Uh, Abhijit Banerjee was a friend from graduate school, so I've known him for, for 30 years. I think this is a superb prize. As you mentioned, it's the second woman uh, to get a Nobel Prize in, in economics. And we're a little bit behind on, uh, on, on that score, so at least we're, we're making up. We've gone from one to two. Hopefully we'll be having more soon. But I think this is a great prize on development. I think these um, all three are super deserving of it and have made really important contributions. Okay. Do you see a shift, a more of an, you know, I guess, a development consciousness when you choose a lot of these prizes? Well, I don't think it's, um, I, I think they've made such important contributions that it's really valuable to have that. But mm -hmm. uh, many, many years ago, another University of Chicago economist, T.W. Schultz, won a uh, Nobel Prize in, in economics for work that he had done on development in agriculture. So there is a long history of this, um, but uh, this is sort of modern development, and uh, these are great people to represent that. And uh, Randy, I just want to go back for a moment to your former classmate, Abhijit Banerjee. Uh, he, of course, won one of the Nobel Prizes for Economics. Tell us a little bit more about him and uh, his area of expertise. Well, he's done an enormous amount, so it would take, take a lot of, lot of time to get through all of it. Um, one of the things that he and uh, his colleagues have been innovators in is, uh, is using a, a certain way of trying to tease um, uh, data out from uh, the real world. Uh, the traditional scientists have, have the luck that they can put things in a, in a petri dish or, or in, a, in a jar and do different experiments on it. It's difficult for economists to do that, but Abhijit and others came up with something called uh, random, randomized controlled experiments, what they've done a lot of in emerging markets, to be able to test, well, what if we change this policy? What if we provide this subsidy? What if we uh, give this incentive? To try to see how that actually operates in the real world. And this has been super valuable, not only in development economics but throughout the entire profession and you can see we also are showing pictures of what's going on in Stockholm uh, some of the slides that they're presenting talking about this experimental approach to alleviating global poverty uh, why is the fact that this is an experimental approach so significant Randy especially when it comes to developing economies and fixing big picture problems well it's using real data and real people to try to look at these things because before that um, before they they had these innovations mm -hmm. You could use data and you could uh, uh, do the traditional approaches that economists do, running regressions on, uh, on different data sets. But the data are never perfect. And, um, and actually, uh, Zvi Grilikis, who is a, a professor that both uh, I had and Abhijit had, a great, um, uh, a great person who did a lot of work in econometrics, always said, try not to um, use the fanciest econometrics. Spend all of your time trying to get the data better. And that's exactly what Abhijit and colleagues are doing, getting better data about what people actually do, how they respond in different circumstances. And that's been super helpful. Uh, why do economists get recessions so wrong? <laughs> well, um, one, they don't happen that often. So we need uh, a lot of data for, in, in order to be able to estimate things precisely. And so um, the, the macroeconomy has so many different pieces in it. So the particular things, for example, that Abhijit and his colleagues uh, focus on are very, very specific. So it might be responding to a particular incentive, providing insurance or not providing insurance in a very specific market. But if you think about the macroeconomy, that has millions of those pieces mm -hmm. and it becomes more difficult. And that's, I think, one of the challenges for, uh, for macro forecasting.